Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, and, and shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, and if not, that's fine too. Team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions. This is our last, one of our last episodes of questions from subs during the regular season. So, it'd be nice if Ravens could make the postseason, but they got a lot going against them. Well, anything's possible, though, but they got to take care of their own business first. But we'll see how everything ends up going. Uh, but we also got to see how these questions end up going, too, because you know y'all be bringing it. So, let's do it. Do we have our next offensive coordinator already? First question came from Elix. Said, hey, Graven, how are you? How's the family doing? Hey, we all doing very good. I appreciate you asking. Tell the team, keep it clean family to stay blessed. I know there's a train going on of fire, Greg Roman, which I am a part of. Uh, now to the question I have, do you think we already have our next offensive coordinator, N.T. Martin? If you really look at it, his college resume, he has been productive everywhere he has been. I wouldn't mind that. Um, because he is exactly what I had been clamoring for, uh, even before they hired him, not him specifically. Um, but I was clamoring for the Ravens to bring in some young, innovative guys who had never been offensive coordinators on an NFL level. Um, and they brought in both Keith Williams and T Martin. Um, but for some reason, I don't know why I just, I feel like if anything happened to Greg Roman, which I don't think it would. Um, but if anything happened to Greg Roman, I just feel like those guys would get overlooked. I, I, I feel like Ravens would not give them uh, the time of day when it comes to being offensive coordinators. I feel like they would just go uh, get one of their old friends or something like that, one of Hobbs' old friends from like the Eagles coaching staff or something like that, uh, or somebody that his brother has worked with, uh, Jim Harbaugh. Um, I don't know. I just, I just don't feel like they would give either one of those two guys the opportunity. So, uh, we'll see, but yeah, we'll see. This question came from Norma. She said, hey, Engraven, hope your new year started off right. I got a question. Do you think that if the team had used both Tyler Huntley and LJ8 intermittently, as in switching them up between games, would that have saved our season? No, I, I don't like that idea at all. Um, reason I don't like that idea is because if you, you don't allow anybody to get into a rhythm, and, and it's like you will, be, you will be playing with Lamar. You'll be playing with him. Like, this dude is your starting quarterback. That's your guy. And for you to flip-flop him in games with Tyler Huntley, and we know Tyler Huntley can play. We, we don't seen him. But, no, I, I feel like that would just be disrespect to Lamar. Um, and he said it would have given Lamar rest and given Ty the playtime he deserves. I think it would have given opposing teams a severe headache and got us more wins. What do you think about that? Nah, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like that idea. Um, if it was preseason, yes, but regular season, no. Nah. Next question came from my guy Lance. He said, hey, I want to ask you something about the Ravens' future. Recently, Sauce Gardner said he's planning to enter the NFL draft. Since Ravens care so much about defense, do you think he should be someone they target? If you don't know who he is, he had over 1,000 snaps in three years and didn't even allow one touchdown. That's insane. If those are accurate stats, that don't even make no sense. That's crazy. He said, I feel like the Ravens would have to give up a lot, but I think he would be really amazing with that culture and young players like Hollywood, Lamar, JK, and everyone else, and he would help the pass defense a lot. Hey, I, I would be with that all day. If he like that's lockdown. That that that's lockdown. I I would love it. And and for him, if he could transition that to the NFL level too, and he's like six two, six three. Uh, but so he's, he seems as if he could be physical. I ain't watching that one lick of film on him yet, but hey, I wouldn't be mad at that. Speaking of the transition, next question came from my guy D3. He said, good morning, engraving and team. Keep it clean. Good morning. Uh, I hope all is well with you and yours. I got two quick questions that I would like your opinion on. With One, with the emergence of the connection between Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase of the Bengals, do you think that more teams will look to draft more QB wide receiver combos that were teammates but draft them within the same draft if available? They say it's a copycat league. Burrow had to wait one year for Chase to become NFL eligible, but... It all was well worth the wait. I I could definitely see that because with your quarterback, especially your young quarterback, one of the biggest things you want him to have with his wide receivers is chemistry. It's chemistry. 
And by you know everything that Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow did at LSU, so why not like like because a lot of people were uh were, were down on them for not taking an offensive lineman. You know Joe Burrow got hurt from not having enough protection, and a lot of people oh they should have t- taken an offensive lineman. I wasn't mad at the pick at all, but y'all know me. I'm like greedy, and I, I'll go for the sexy pick every time. But I, uh, I, I, I love the pick, and it's obviously paid off in a major way. Ravens fans know firsthand both times, but it's paid off in a major way. That dude, Jamar Chase, is everything, man. He, he is everything. So, yeah, I could definitely see uh, teams doing that same approach. He said, in a previous live stream, I mentioned that the Ravens should draft Derek Stingley Jr., Stingley Jr. a cornerback from LSU that played with Patrick Queen but also has experience covering Chase and Jefferson in practice while Joe Burrow was the quarterback. Do you think a cornerback with personal experience covering Chase and defending against Burrow should be a move that EDC makes? Um, I mean, any, anybody that could cover anybody, really. Uh, I, I, I can see what you're saying with that, um, especially since we will be going against them two times a year. But you, you just want a cornerback that can do it all. Uh, that can cover it all. Uh, that can cover as much ground as possible. Um, and well, yeah, with that, I, I just I wouldn't want them to focus just so much on just Jamar Chase and, and Joe Burrow. Obviously, they are on the come up. I mean, they they in the playoffs. They the AFC North division champions this year. So, but um, it so if 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 they could just straight up play, that that's all that matters to me. Um, yeah, experience against those guys in particular would be an added bonus. I don't feel like that should be the, the primary focus, though. Uh, he said he's a cerebral assassin, and we've seen teams adjust their draft and play style to try and counteract the Ravens drafting Lamar, especially after 2019. Faster middle linebackers, bigger safeties that stack the box and, and becoming, are becoming a norm now. Uh, and I hope that the Ravens stay proactive and address their draft needs based on our division foes first and not what the media says we should do. That's important because you know that outside noise, it gets into the Ravens every time. Um, Stingley is coming off of a foot injury, so he could possibly fall to us later in the draft. What are your thoughts? Okay. See, I didn't know about that part. If, if that's accurate too, then yeah. I, uh, and he's a really good cornerback. And yeah, it just dropped due to in and out. Hopefully it wouldn't be a lingering injury, anything that he would be dealing with for a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I would be down with that. He said, again, thank you for your input and keep up the great work. I hey, appreciate you, D3. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, if all of our young guys were about to hit free agency, which like all of them are, <laughs> who would you re-sign and who would you let walk? Since Mark has already re-signed, he's excluded. When I say young, I'm saying no one over the age of 30. Well, do we have any young or well, Anthony Averett? Um, would Marcus Peters coming back? And he's getting ready to get a big contract. So I would, I would let Anthony Averett walk. Um, what other? Oh, we got Bozeman. He's not 30. Um, I would keep him if I could get him at a good price, not trying to be cheap or anything, but yeah, I would probably, I would, I would, I would probably keep him, um, give us that consistency on the offensive line. But if it wasn't numbers that I was like, all right, yeah, this is, then I would just go with Tristan Colon Castillo because he, he's shown that he, he can play, he can play. Um, and who else, who else is a young guy? I feel like that's it. Like. Most of our guys that are going to be free agents, they're older. Unless I'm missing some, I can't think of anybody else right now. Uh, but his other question was, uh, I asked earlier about which young guys you'll keep around, but now I'm wondering how would you build this team for success? Um, I would just really, to, to build them for success, uh, I would change the culture. Not, not the culture, but the philosophy. Because the, the culture is good. People love the Ravens. They love Baltimore, they, they, they love the team, the energy, they love all that. But I would just change the philosophy and just really um, have them get with the times, man. Have them open this thing up, open up that passing game like it's never been opened up before. Um, again, the running game, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have to go anywhere you, because you have players that can run the football. Um, upgrade the offensive line. Hope Ronnie Stanley comes back healthy, but still prioritize that offensive line uh, because that dictates so much of how your season can go. Um, and just really get some more some playmakers on defense because that's we obviously Marcus Peters was out all year, but we were seriously missing playmakers on defense. Like 
The turnovers were down. We ain't have no. We we got our first defensive touchdown uh, in week. It took us to week what seventeen? Was that seventeen? Uh, yeah, I think it was seventeen. Whatever week it was, we we played the Rams. Yeah, because that was seventeen. So it shouldn't have taken us that long to get our first defensive touchdown. And if we got another defensive touchdown, please let me know because I surely don't remember it. But yeah, it it that's like, and not that you're gonna be getting pick sixes every week or fumble return for touchdowns every week, but. We know the the defense has just been down this year. They've been down and they've been beat up, we know, but they just been down overall. So yeah, I would um open up the offense and, and get some playmakers for the defense. Next question came from my boy Gregory. He said, Good morning. Let me say this. I'm a big fan of Lamar Jackson and I appreciate what he's done for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh oh. Anybody who starts off like that is 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 getting ready to be something that could be a little a little off because I'm, and I'm speaking from experience because what I see a lot of people say, and, and it's always so funny when they say this. When they start off, say, Engraven, I really I really love your videos, appreciate what you do, but, and it's, oh, okay, here it goes. Because it's, it's like people got to, they got to preface their statement with that. Like, they got to they, they gotta prepare you. Like, oh, look, I, ain't no disrespect, but, but anyway, let's see what he had to say. Uh, however, see, there goes that however. He said, this offseason, there will be top tier quarterbacks available for a possible trade. Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers. Here we go. Let's be honest. Eric DaCosta has to give some consideration of trading Lamar Jackson if the above mentioned quarterbacks become available for a trade. You mentioned in a previous video that the Ravens have to evolve regarding their offensive, offensive philosophy. I did say that. He said, and I agree with you 100%. I believe Lamar is limited in throwing the ball. Let's be honest. Tyler Huntley makes quicker decisions and more accurate. Oh. Tyler Huntley has been making quicker decisions than Lamar. But the Ravens have been running a different offense with Tyler Huntley than Lamar. Um, this is why a lot of people were even, a lot of people were already frustrated at Greg Roman, but this made them even more frustrated at Greg Roman because it's like, man, where was that quick passing offense? Because look, look, um, look at the, the Colts game. And look at, look at actually the Colts game from this year and the Colts game from last year. What happened in both of those games? Ravens found themselves down. They found themselves down. But when Lamar, when they went to that more up-tempo, quick-pace quick pace offense, Lamar was hitting them in the short game, and then he threw, mixed it in with the deep ball too. Both, both years, both last year and the year before last too. And it's just, it's these things where we're like, hey, like, can we do that more? It doesn't have to be every single drive. They don't got to be an up-tempo offense every single drive. We don't want no Chip Kelly style. But to incorporate it more and more often and early on, just you can help your quarterback out a lot more, a, a whole lot more. Um, so, no, I, no, no, you, no. Aaron Rodgers is nice. One of, if not the best quarterback in the league right now. And Aaron Rodgers continues to have these phenomenal seasons every year. These, he throw for like he always throw for like seventy five touchdowns to like two interceptions. Amazing. Ravens got their guy already. Russell Wilson, nice quarterback too. Probably gonna be out of there. Ravens got their guy already. Deshaun Watson, no, that's <laughs> too risky. Nice quarterback, but too, too risky. Um, who else did you mention? I think that was it. But even if there's any, no, uh, uh, you, no, 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 no. We love Tyler Huntley and what he's done too. Uh, but we we also got to look at the results. Look at the results. Minus the Packers game, because the Packers game, he, um, I mean, the defense just they, it was tough. It, it was tough for them. <laughs> uh, but no, it's no. Mm -mm. And next question came from my guy Phil, and he's also talking about a quarterback trade. Let's see what he got to say. He said, through four games this season, Huntley has been able to show and prove his athletic ability, skills, and speed. Now an article recently caught my attention, so I wanted to get your thoughts on my idea. It was posted uh, that back, in, back during the middle of the season, Calvin really left to get help on his mental issues. Today I read that really wants a fresh start and to be traded. Last season, Baltimore made moves for Galladay. Uh, Smith Schuster and Hilton. I, I don't think they made a move for Galladay. It said that they had checked on him, but the the price was just too high, and they were like, uh, no, no. Uh, but anyway, uh, until they signed Sammy Watkins to a one year deal, who can never stay healthy. And Hilton, he couldn't stay healthy. So Juju Smith Schuster, who is usually healthy, 
he ended up not even being healthy this year. And Kenny Galladay, who hadn't been healthy, he ended up getting hurt this year too. So all of these wide receivers, they all ended up getting hurt. And Julio Jones too. He ended up getting hurt too. So it's like, man, it's like every receiver, I didn't even think about that. But every receiver that the Ravens had been interested in, they all ended up getting hurt. Who knows what would have happened if they would have went to different teams. But it, it just, that's how it ended up working out. Anyway, um, after I read this article, it came to mind after this season, I know at least nine to 10 QB needy teams will try and make a trade offer with for Huntley. Now, Atlanta is soon going to try and replace Matt Ryan, where I know it probably won't happen. But what if EDC was to make an offer of Huntley and maybe a third rounder uh, for Ridley? Oh, instead of waiting until Huntley becomes a free agent, they might as well get something in return for him. Plus, Ridley would be a great replacement for Watkins. Just think about it. We would have one of the best wide receiver cores in the league. Yeah, I know the only way we will be explosive at passing the ball is if Greg Roman is hopefully replaced by T. Martin as an offensive coordinator. What's your thoughts, Engraven? Thanks. I love this. I love it. Um, but everything you said, uh, I mean, you, you, the way that you close it out is exactly what I was thinking as I was reading it, because I'm thinking, ooh, man, Rashad Bateman, Hollywood, Calvin Ridley, Devin Duvernay, Prochet, um, and, and uh, Tylen Wallace, too. You still got Boykin, but I, I think I think Boykin is probably his last year with the Ravens. Um, but I just, I wouldn't be confident in the Ravens, really. And I know you can't use every single wide receiver every game. I know that. But I just, I wouldn't be confident in the Ravens, really, like, putting these guys in the best position for success. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. It'd be nice to have all of them and have those options and stuff, but I just, that's how I feel about it. So, I mean, it'd be, that'd be nice. Uh, Huntley, he wouldn't start there right away, but Matt Ryan, he's getting up there. And Matt Ryan, I mean, he, he probably going to, I feel like Matt Ryan, he's he going to have to be forced out. I mean, you look at Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco, like, hey, I'm, I'm still here. I'm, I'm still playing. So Matt Ryan, like, hey, I am too. Um, so it, I just, uh, so I feel like Tyler Huntley could have a shot there, possibly. Um, and uh, yeah, for Huntley in a third round pick to get Calvin Ridley, oh man, I, I I would love it, but I just don't see it happening. I just don't see it working out for him here. Next question came from Nanya. He said, hey, which coordinator do the Ravens need to replace more? I know a lot of folks want Roman gone and there's a case for that. Allow me to present the case for Week being gone instead. Uh, Adafi away. This guy seems like he could be a force in this league, but he is never going to ascend to a top pass rusher in Wings defense. I agree with that 1,000%. This is not the scheme that is for pass rushers to really be pass rushers like that. Um, so you, you just got to do too much. But anyway, he says Smith, Ozadarius oh, Smith, Matt Judon, and Ngakwe are examples of what this defense does to pass rushers. I think the case can be made that Adafi Away was a wasted pick. If Wink is your long-term plan at defensive coordinator, uh, you likely could have found another Smith, McPhee, or Judon later in the draft for the pass rush production that OA is going to give us with Wink and use that better pick uh, to protect Lamar. Oh, well, that could be why they took Dalen Hayes. Because, you know, any remember this. This is what Eric DaCosta, anything that they take in the first round, they will definitely be doubling down on that. So you can expect to see another one of those be picked later on in the draft did it with hollywood and uh miles boykin uh they did it with adafi away and dalen hayes uh they did it oh why can't oh patrick queen and malik harrison they doubled down so just look out for that in this upcoming draft anyway he said i also think it says a lot that roman lost his entire running back room multiple offensive linemen starting quarterback and has had a rotating door wide receiver with all the injuries and his offense is still moving the ball. Wings defense faced with similar adversity is so bad that Harbaugh keeps gambling on two-point conversions because he has no faith that his defense can get a stop if the Ravens don't get the ball first in overtime. Ooh, a lot, uh, a lot to end it with there. Um, cause y'all, y'all know how I feel about them two-point conversions. I feel like all of them were unnecessary. Um, but anyway, uh, I feel you. But yeah, well, well Wings scheme is. He's, it's weird because he's done a better job at adjusting and, and he'd been holding back the blitz sometimes and uh, he's, he's been putting his guys in less, of, less positions to uh, fail. Um, and, but still, it's, it's not a defense that's built for pass rushers to eat like that. They just, they're not going to eat like that here. It's just not going to happen. Um, and... Again, they, they do so much. They just do so much. They have to do too much. 
Um, I, I still feel like with Greg Roman, just again, and it, it's, it's deeper than Greg Roman for me. Um, because again, it's, it's just the Ravens' philosophy. That's the biggest thing I keep saying is their philosophy. It, it's their MO. They'll just run the ball, run the ball, play good defense. But you, you, you got to open this thing up more, too. You, 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 ha you have to be willing to make a change and, and, and update this offense, get with the times. Um, because it's the old school football, again, it's, it's cool and whatnot, but no, it, it's, it's time to really get this thing in motion, man. Um, so it, it, for, for me, it goes beyond Greg Roman. Um, but as far as Wink, yeah, that, that, that's how it's going to be. Uh, for the, we, we still, we always going to have questions about, oh man, when are we ever going to be able to get to the quarterback consistently? Because they'll have some games where they can get to the quarterback, but it'll just be some games. Majority of the season, it'll be that's those same struggles. Um, so, yeah, you did make a, a, a good case, though. But, yeah, the, as far as, as as long as we're in this scheme, again, it, it, it can hold quarterbacks down. Like, it, it can hold, especially when he got guys healthy. He don't give up many points. That's one thing. And that's the most important thing when it comes to it. He don't give up the points. Um, but... It's it's just not that turn, turnover creating. And again, points is the most thing, right? That's the most important thing, right? Because you don't give up points, then boom, you uh, that's that's the name of the game. You trying to score more points than the other team, and if your defense is holding them down, hey, great for you. Um, so yeah, I, but as far as getting to the quarterback, it's just it's not gonna happen for anybody in this scheme, unless they like. Ooh, for somebody to overcome this scheme, it will, it will take a lot. It will take a whole lot. And I, I would love to see somebody do it, but I just, I don't really envision it. Next question came from Clarence. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. This is my last post because I have endeavors that need my focus. Hey, well, I hope those endeavors get taken care of and you do a good job, Adam Clarence. Appreciate all the questions, by the way, too. He said, many football pundits continually say that Lamar needs to hire an agent for his next contract. Whenever such a statement is made, they assume that Mr. Lamar and Mrs. Jackson's uh, reading comprehension is low. They also say that Mr. Lamar won't hire an agent to save money. Another assuming fact. For pundits to assume these facts without supportive research is terrible. Uh, what do you think? I enjoy the unique platform you created for us football fans to air our questions. Thanks for that. No, thank you for even sending them. Um, I, I just think that a, a, a lot of people, pundits, experts, analysts, whatever, I think they're uh, just worried about Lamar and his mom just really changing the game. Um, because you've heard of guys like Richard Sherman uh, doing a deal without an agent, um, but you don't hear about it too often. And with Lamar, if they able to do a deal without an agent, especially a quarterback deal and a deal that is going to be a lot of money, a record-breaking deal, um, then and they do it without an agent, that could have such a big impact and a bad a bad impact on agents because it could show like, hey, wait a minute, we we don't really need y'all, um, and and it it could, it could just impact so many different people. So I think the NFL just they they wouldn't want that. That's why. You don't really hear many people praising Lamar, Lamar not having an agent uh, because they don't want the game to be changed. Next question came from my guy, Makai. He said, hey, Raven, want to get your opinion on this. I feel our defense has become very underrated by the league and our fans. In our last two playoff matches, we allow 13 and 10 points. Uh, we have six. We have had six games of allowing 17 or less points, and we have had a top five defense run defense all year and a top two uh, for some part of it. Although we don't get the, to the quarterback as much as we should. <laughs> we, that's what we just talking about. But we also talked about the points, too. See, team keep it clean, be on point. Anyway, he said, although we don't get to the quarterback as much as we should, Wink has had this defense playing great uh, since he has been the defensive coordinator. Keep up the great work. Yeah, exactly what I was just saying. I appreciate it, too, Makai. Um, exactly what I was just saying about Wink. The points, the points are low, and that's the most important thing. Getting to the quarterback, though, that's, that's low as well. That, that's just as low as the points. Um, so <laughs> but again, yeah, he, he, he's not a bad defensive coordinator. Um, but again, his uh, getting to the quarterback is always going to be a problem. But giving up points is not. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got a made it. Shout out to Graven.